best ways to build a healthier local economy is by shopping locally. Teamster Advantage is a shop local program started by Teamster Local 1932 that has brought together hundreds of locally owned businesses to provide discounts for residents who make shopping locally their priority. Everything from restaurants like Corky's to fun times at SB Raceway and much, much more. If you're not currently a Teamster and you want access to these local business discounts, contact Jennifer at 909-889-8377, extension 224. Give her a call. That number again is 909-889-8377, extension 224. Labor unions built the middle class, and the middle class built America. That's the message from Teamsters Local 1932, a strong and successful labor union based in San Bernardino that represents over 14,000 hardworking people across the Inland Empire. The Teamsters are ready to help you organize for better pay, increased benefits, and improved working conditions. Reach out to Teamsters 1932 at Teamsters1932.org backslash organize to speak with an organizer today. Here is the voice of the working class, Rick Smith. And welcome, brothers, sisters, working class heroes. This is the Rick Smith Show. Thanks so much for being here today on the big program. Lots to get to, lots to talk about. Oh boy, another day, another day. Another day of Kevin McCarthy blaming Democrats. Yeah, it's all the Democrats' fault. The Democrats voted to try to bring chaos. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's all the Democrats' fault, Kevin. Uh, you're in this mess because, yes, it's the Democrats who did this to you. The Democrats did it. And look, you know, that's that's all they've got, really. You know, that's all they that's all they can do right now is well is, is blame the Democrats, right? Because there's there's not much else. They they certainly can't blame themselves, can they? Because ultimately they're the ones that are responsible. I mean it's almost like they're on this this weird murder suicide pact where they, they can't figure out how to get themselves well functional. And the weird thing is is uh, you know, Jim Jordan today got the Republican House conference nomination. Didn't we just do this? <laughs> Wasn't this just kind of deja vu-ish? Uh, he got 124 votes to Austin Scott's 81 votes, makes him the nominee. Now gets to go possibly, maybe, not even sure if it goes to the floor. Because, look, if he had the 217 he needs, they'd have done it already. It happened. It would have happened already. If he, they had the 217 votes, it'd be over. They'd be celebrating, they'd be drinking, do whatever it is, whatever it is that they do. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. Uh, he's far short of the 217. So, again, it makes this all, well, just another charade. And, and look, you know, here's the thing. Even Republicans aren't even showing up for it. Pat, Patrick McHenry uh, told, told members that, out of the 221 Republicans, only 209 bothered to show up. You know, the rest of them were out, I don't know, doing podcasts or, I don't know, something. Uh, now, the weird thing is Republicans are in crisis. There, there's trouble here because they cannot seem to figure out, can't figure out how to, how to fix their their problem. And it's the, it's the eight who are holding them hostage. And, you know, what's what's... What's kind of important to understand in this moment, about this time, in this moment right now that we're living through, is that the Republicans respect nothing. They respect none of the norms of the past. They respect none of, of the precedent of, of the past. None of that. Uh, they, they don't respect election results. And that's, that's, that's new-ish. And the thing is, is they don't even respect the election results that they control. Now understand, you know, you had the the caucus nod that Scalise got, which normally in normal times, 
you come out of that conference, you have the, the, the backing of, of the majority of the members, and you go, hey, as, as a functional party, you know, we, you know they, we won, let's move along, let's get some work done, there are things we can do. That used to mean something. That used to get things done. Not now. You've got a handful of people who are literally holding the country hostage. And, and I was thinking about this today. Think of how, how the Republicans have normalized chaos. Think about in the, in the Trump era. Now, look, they've always been the party of no. They've always been the party of gridlock and delay. But they've always done it within the, you know, the parameters of, 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 so, of you know, governmental norms. Now you got, no, no, we're burning things down. We're going to overrun the Capitol and defecate on your floor. This is this is a weird moment we're in. Because you know, you, you hear about government being about compromise and working together and you know for the common good and you know all those all those high minded things. How do you if you're the Democrats, how do you compromise with people who can't even compromise with themselves? They won't even compromise with people that they agree with. They agree with each other on 99% of things and yet still can't get the yes. And and look, you know, it's I hope I hope it hurts them. I hope they get their just rewards out of this. I hope they get what they've earned, which is a min permanent minority status, which is shown the door come next November which is the end of their, their reign of terror, if you will. Because, again, we've, what, what, what have they accomplished? And they go, but, you know, they're, they only have a slim majority. They've only got 221 votes. Yeah, you know, Hillary, you, know, you know, Nancy Pelosi had a smaller margin. Got things done. Didn't have dysfunction. Because here's the thing. You have people on the Democratic side who believe in government who believe that we should be doing things to make people's lives better. We should be doing things to improve our country's infrastructure, to improve the future of, the, of humanity, if you will. But on the other side, you've got bomb throwers and, and destroyers. And that's, that's a problem. And this is one of those things that's, that's really frustrating and angering. Now, uh, you say, you know, are they going to get what they earn and what they deserve? Uh, what's what's what it appears the fundraisers don't happy the fundraisers are not pleased uh, the moneyed interests certainly not pleased uh, because they're kind of you know pulling back uh, evidently they don't know who to buy this is this is the this is the weird part the moneyed interests don't know which which person to buy <laughs> you know who who on the list Who's going to be the leader and whose coffers do you fill? Now, Scalise, I, I kind of understood because he, he does have some fundraising ability. And, you know, with his baggage, you know, although, you know, in some circles, his I'm David Duke without the baggage is, is a positive. Uh, he could have brought money in, but not now. Uh, McCarthy, his well has dried up. And you're going to go to Jim Jordan? one of the most unlikable people in Congress to be your fundraiser? Because understand, being speaker is about more than just slamming the gavel on the table and yelling and screaming. It's about leadership. It's about vision. It's about actually getting things done. It's about bringing people together. And oh, by the way, it's about fundraising. So what you've got now is, and this could help Democrats down the road, uh, you've got the uh, the Republican uh, money machine going help. And look, if you're if you're the if you're a rich guy, do you want to get involved in any of this? I gotta think not so much. But I got a lot to get a lot to get to, a lot to talk about. I, I gotta tell you this this is insane, and it's sucking all of the oxygen out of the room. It's sucking all of the energy out of the room. When there are horrible things going on around the world, and there's some really good things going on here at home, and I look at you know Sean Fain's speech today about going, hey, 
you know, we're we in the working class, we're going to take on the moneyed interest. We're going to take on big corporations and we're going to fight for a better standard of living. See, this is where I want to spend my time. This is what we should be doing. At some point, I got to wonder, when do we finally realize that Republicans have broken our government and we got to take it back? I want to hear your thoughts. Email me, Rick at the Rick Smith Show dot com. Lots to get to. Quick break. Right back after this. We are AFGE, the American Federation of Government Employees. We represent 700,000 federal and D.C. government workers who are the vital threads of the fabric of American life. We support our nation's military. We take care of our nation's veterans. We protect our nation's borders. We respond to our nation's crises and natural disasters. We provide services to our nation's seniors. The American Federation of Government Employees. We work for America. The phone lines are open. Give Rick a call at 1-866-416-RICK. That's 1-866-416-7425. Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. Absolutely amazing where we are. Just, just mind-blowing. Uh, let's quick go to the phones. We've got uh, we've got Kurt from Akron on line one. Kurt, how you doing today? Hey, good evening, and I haven't talked to you in 11 billion years. What's in your mind? Well, hey, first of all, 285 a gallon for gas in Akron, Ohio tonight. Not bad. I, I wish Not I lived there. <laughs> well, you know, there's a house for sale down the street. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, why does it seem like 25 years ago we're reliving a Groundhog Day of 25 years ago in the House of Representatives? Do you remember uh, when Bill Clinton was being impeached and Newt Gingrich had to resign in disgrace after the midterm election and then they're doing the impeachment vote and Bob Livingston was the next one in line to become the Speaker of the House and he resigns in disgrace before he's even voted on because he had an affair with some woman other than his wife. Yeah. And then we ended up getting Denny Hastert. Yeah, and if only we so, would have found out he was a kid toucher and he, he would have gotten ousted. Exactly. But, see, this is what I'm saying is we don't have McCarthy anymore. Um, Scalise resigns for whatever reason. Marjorie Trader Green says it's because he has blood cancer, which that could be the case. And we end up with another guy who is a wrestling coach who covered up for child molestation. So why is it we're having Groundhog's Day in the House of Representatives no, 25 point. years later? Well, I mean, it, it is the Republican Party. Good point. Exactly. Oh, and then also, you were talking about the moneyed interest. Remember, Donald Trump ain't going to give any money to those guys because Donald Trump doesn't spend money on anybody but himself, and he doesn't even spend it on himself. He just kind of hoards it yep. because if he wasn't rich, he'd be hoarding garbage. <laughs> well, that's why they weren't going to make him speaker, and I thought that from the beginning because that job is all about raising money. But I appreciate the call, Kurt. Thanks so much, buddy. Thank you. Uh, let's go to Steve on line two. Steve, how are we doing today? What's on your mind, buddy? Well, I mean, I, I share your view with regard to what's going on in the Republican Party. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a bunch of children who decided, you know, okay, well, we don't like the class president, and we're going to oust him. Uh, we have no plan for what comes after that, because we don't have anybody else who could possibly get elected to the position. But, hey, you know, we'll oust him because we can. Because, like a bunch of children, you know, we didn't get everything that we wanted. Uh, on some menu that we had going into this process, because you know, in a in a functional uh, in a functional democracy, in, in in our system of government, you know, you don't get everything you want. Why? Because you don't control everything in, in government, and you certainly don't control the White House. And the president has the capacity to veto what things that are passed in the Congress. And there's uh, there's a lot of people who voted for the other party. You know, it, it's not as if we, you've got a super majority. In, in your house, but so and and the speaker that you did have just barely squeaked squeaked by a victory after 15 ballots, and so basically uh, the whoever.
whoever runs now has got about four or five people in their party that they can play with as far as a margin of victory. Uh, and uh, given the two votes that were taken today, we, what we know about Jim Jordan is the first one, he was down over 80 votes. The second one, about 55 votes. So he's nowhere near that margin to, to be able to squeeze in for his own party. So I don't know what they think that they're, they're accomplishing here. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you ended up with another Speaker McCarthy or simply the interim Speaker remains Speaker. But, uh, but from the standpoint of Democrats and other people, they're just sitting back, you know, like you and I with our legs up, uh, you know, and saying to ourselves, okay, this is a great show because going into 2024, what are you going to run on as a Republican, oh wow! Look at uh, we're we're functional. We're a great party. Look at what we're doing for you in Washington. Uh, the people who are who are actually worried about getting reelected are pulling their hair out, and a number of them have actually gone come up forward to make public statements about how ridiculous this Republican Party is. This is not what you want to do in an election year. You you don't want to look like you're ineffective and you can't govern, and that you're doing nothing but infighting. So, you know, and it's not as if you're going to get a bunch of Republicans who are going to vote Democrat, but you can get a lot of independents who will. And the other thing is you can just get Republicans who will stay home, and that's the other headache. So, you know, again, like a bunch of children, there was a time to pull this. This this time, this time year was not it. And going into November, again, where people seem to forget sometimes, that you know what, we just passed a resolution that extended our deadline with regard to the debt ceiling until mid-November. It didn't solve it. And without a, a speaker, I don't know how that gets solved, quite frankly, and what, the, what that means. What is it now, does that mean we're more likely to get a shutdown? Or can we we'll have another continuing resolution, and then perhaps until after the first of the year, we, so we'll try and deal with it again? Yeah. This is why have Democrats no have come forth and said, hey, you know, we'll, we'll let the temporary speaker, you know, move some big legislation, you know, the big stuff that needs to get done. You know, the, the you know, really important, eminent stuff, you know, everything else, you know, you can you can fight over later. But the country needs some functional House of Representative uh, to, to do the people's work. And this is the, the this is the Democrats going, we're going to help you uh, in your moment. We're going to save you in your moment of dysfunction. And the, the Republicans aren't even going to take that, I don't think. Oh, absolutely. And then, of course, you know, with everything that's going on in the international community, so you, we already know you've got a divided Republican Party with regard to the war in Ukraine. There are Republicans who actually take the side of the Russians. Uh, they don't openly say it, but what, what they'll do is use coded language in terms of, you know, the United States doesn't need to be giving Ukraine money. You know, we could be spending that money somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. You know, if this was the same party that, you know, that, that claimed that we were fighting the evil empire and there was no expense that was too great. Uh, a few decades ago, but now you know we can't we can't help Ukraine. You know why? Because Vladimir Putin is our kind of guy. Just say what you really think. You know, let's stop acting like it's about anything else. Yeah. And and now, of course, you, uh, added to the mix, you've got this conflict in in Israel, and uh, and for people who don't know it, there are a couple of different sort of factions within the Republican Party. Part of the Republican Party, the the people who were in Charleston. And you know uh, the uh, save the right people. I believe it. Well, I believe that that's what it's referred unite to, the right. right? Uh, unite. That's it. Thank you very much. Unite the right people. Those people are no fans of Israel, but they make up the, a base of the Republican Party. Those are the people who were there on January 6th. So then you've got another segment of the Republican Party that are sort of these evangelical Christians that actually want to fund, uh, help to fund Israel and give them money and so forth. Not because they love uh, Jews so much. They want, they want, uh, they think end times are coming. Yep. You know, sort of this ridiculous. So, uh, it, so this is bringing about another rift in the, in terms of wh where their party stands. So, yeah, I don't know where we go here. I, it's difficult to try and gauge crazy people because if you're not crazy, you're, it's hard to understand <laughs> the minds of crazy people. There you go. I appreciate the thought, Steve. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Uh, no, he's, he's, he's absolutely right. Look, in fact, we, we talked about this the other day. Uh, you had that former Ohio legislator, the one, I forget what her name is, uh, Candace Keller, I think her name was, who posted, she's happy, happy, the end is near. <laughs> because she's one of these, you know, the, the, the rapture's coming, you know, when the, when the, the Jews start fighting and the war, and the, the, Jesus is going to come back and just chop people into little bits. And the good thems are going to rise up. 
yeah, I mean, this is the kind of insanity that's been allowed to percolate, uh, you know, through through you know a certain vein of the Republican Party. And then, of course, you know, I asked this as well. How do you how do you have the people who who on both sides of their head are anti-Semitic, uh, who are the uh, you know, you know the, your unite the right folks, uh, who uh, you know the, you know the, the Zeke Heil folks, and yet still uh, you know all now you know spewing the hey we're all Israel. I I don't know how you have both those thoughts in your head. I just don't. But here's the thing. I, I kind of get it because our 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 media structure is so badly broken. I saw a thing today that said the Epic Times is now the fourth largest, fourth most subscribed publication in this country. The fourth most subscribed newspaper in America. Its revenue has grown 685% in just two years to over $122 million. And you go, Epic Times? Who runs that? Uh, a Chinese religious sect. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, the paper's run by uh, Fallen Gong, uh, who uh, claims that January 6th is a hoax. Uh, climate change is a hoax. In fact, the first time that I, I came across the, the Epic Times Twitter feed, I thought it was a parody account. I thought it was just a crazier version of The, of the Onion. Uh, but no, 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 no. And this is the thing. You got brainwashing and propaganda of American citizens uh, by a Chinese religious group. That's epic. <laughs> and look, you know, then you combine that with, with social media, which is a giant cesspool of lies and propaganda and disinformation uh, at its face. Thank you, Elon Musk, what you've done to Twitter. And we are awash in propaganda and BS and disinformation. And, you know, I, look, I've been I've been on on X now, formerly known as Twitter. I've been I've been watching some of the videos supposedly coming out of Gaza. And it's all this, all the most atrocious stuff, only it's not from there. It's atrocious stuff from, you know, the past that we're now just recycling. And it's meant to keep people, you know, all riled up and angry and, and, and you know, pointed at each other and misinformed. That's the part that's, that's really frustrating and angering. Because, you know, you want to believe that an informed electorate, an informed citizenry, you know, active, engaged, informed, that, that we're going to make decisions that are in the best interest of we the people. That's what the, that's the foundation of what this entire experiment of self-governance is supposedly all about. But what do you do when massive disinformation campaigns are allowed, and not just allowed, but but promoted on every level and you have a mainstream corporate controlled media where virtually everything you see hear, and read are controlled by six corporations seeking profit um what do you do with this you know and i go back to that les les moonves quote you know donald trump may not be good for democracy but he's good for our bottom line which is why again the hill today uh puts out a piece on the Trump campaign defends Hezbollah remarks. Quote, smart does not equal good. So they wrote a whole piece defending Trump's comments. Yes, we have a media structure playing both sides of the fence. Because, hey, we got to prop Trump up because you got to have a Trump-Biden race because that's how you're going to make money. Even though Trump has already flopped, he's already, and you don't see Trump back up very often. You do not see Trump retract anything. You never see him apologize. That's the reason his, his base loves him. He never apologizes. But here's the thing. After saying, you know, there, Hezbollah is smart, uh, he now says, and went after Netanyahu, he now uh, truthed out, I stand with Israel and I stand with Bibi. Uh, he, he, he truthed out also, I have always been impressed by the skill and determination of the Israeli Defense Forces as they defend their nation against ruthless terrorists. I want to wish every soldier the best of luck. May you return home safely to your families and may God bless all of you. Um, that is a giant about face. That's, I know, he's on both sides of every issue most of the time and you, he's slippery like, you know, like any con man. But that's wow. For for Trump, that is a that's a big that's a big one.
that is that is a big one. Want to hear your thoughts? Email me, Rick at the ricksmithshow.com. Got lots to get to, lots to talk about. Right back after this. Stick around. You're listening to the Rick Smith Show. We're working people. Come to talk. Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 2010. That was the day 33 Chilean miners were finally pulled to safety after being trapped for 69 days. Workers had been mining copper and gold 2,300 feet down at the San Jose mine near the northern city of Capiapo when the mine caved in in early August. The company waited several hours to notify authorities, and rescue efforts only began to Two days later, trapped miners initially tried to escape through ventilation shafts, but found the required ladders missing. Each route they attempted was blocked by fallen rock or threatened additional collapse. A state-owned mining company took over the rescue efforts, and soon they began. As geologist Serena Sorensen noted, prospecting for people. Initial exploratory boreholes failed to locate miners because mine shaft maps had never been updated. Rescuers had no idea whether miners were even still alive. Finally, 17 days later, the eighth borehole reached them. The miners tapped on the drill and taped notes to it, alerting rescuers above that they were indeed alive and well. Food, medicine, and other supplies were lowered down to them as rescue efforts intensified. Many cameras were also lowered down and miners videotaped messages of their continued ordeal. They told how they continued to search for possible escape routes and agreed to ration their limited food supplies so they could all survive. The first of three drilling plans to free the miners began. It was an international effort. The Chilean Navy consulted with NASA to design and construct the rescue pods. Throughout the entire process, rescuers worked to prevent additional cave-ins and rock falls. Finally, the extraction process began, and in less than 48 hours, all miners emerged as heroes. Here's my suggestion for stopping the ultra-right-wing loopiness coming out of the mouths of Republican officials. Hearing aids. I'm convinced that the wacko blatherings of Matt Getz, the ravings of the QAnon cult, Trump's tantrums, and so many others are the result of a tragic neurological disconnect. This affliction lets their tongues wag impulsively, but their ears don't pick up the noise, so they're unaware that they are prattling nonsense. The current chaos in Congress's Republican caucus is one embarrassing example of this eardrum contagion, but it has spread throughout the country, even to local right-wing officials. In Shasta County, California, for example, the Republican-controlled Board of Supervisors recently lurched into full-tilt screwballism, frenetically warning that Japanese forces are weaponizing mosquitoes to be, quote, flying syringes to mass-inject Americans. See? No way they would have said that if they could hear themselves. Which brings us to the fount of present-day right-wing goofiness, Texas state officials. Their latest tone-deaf ploy is by Governor Greg Abbott, who wants to divert our people's tax dollars from public schools to exclusive private academies, subsidizing the rich class he serves. He's tried to do this before, but he fails, since even conservative Republicans in rural counties don't want their public education turned over to profiteering corporate chains. So this time, Greg is hyping privatization as a, quote, religious freedom issue, piously preaching that, quote, God created us to have family units, not state bureaucrats, make decisions for families. This is Jim Hightower saying, sheesh, does Abbott even have ears? Or maybe he's hoping that we don't have memories, for we have heard him howling constantly that the state, not families, must make every woman's personal reproductive decisions. Let's buy a hearing aid for him and set it on a constant replay loop. Welcome back to The Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So, interestingly enough, Texas Representative Michael McCall, uh, he said, our adversaries are watching. Our adversaries are watching the infighting as uh, as Republicans are paralyzed in the House. 
He says, I see a lot of threats out there, but one of the biggest threats I see is in that room because we can't unify as a conference and put a speaker in the chair to govern. And I said this from the beginning. One of the biggest threats to this country right now is the Republican Party and their inability to govern one of the three branches of our government. And look, the world is watching. The globe is watching how dysfunctional we are. And that ain't good. Not good for us on any level. And here to share some thoughts on where we are and what this means and maybe maybe a different perspective. I've asked our good friend Rich Ojeda to come talk with us. Rich is the host of Ojeda Live, where you can find him every weeknight. Also, he is the chief cook and bottle washer over at the Turn Left Pack, turnleftpack.org, the website, if you want to take a look at that. Rich, thanks for taking time for us. Anytime, man. I always enjoy being on your show, Rick. So so what do you make of, uh, of McCall's statement uh, that our adversaries are watching and um, the problem is, is them? Well, you know, right now, Europe is a powder keg with Russia and Ukraine. And now we've got basically everything going, going south over in, in Israel. Uh, this is not the time for us to not have a leader, not have leadership. This is not the time. I mean, literally, just imagine what would happen if one of our ships that are now in the Middle East, if it happened to get rocketed or bombed or sunk. You know, we don't even have Congress, uh, you know, to, to be able to come in and, 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 and vote whether or not to, 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 you know, commit us to war if, if something happens to our troops. This is absolutely horrible. And I think the world is watching. And, and what we're seeing is, is the Republicans do not have the ability to rule. Uh, they can't get along. And, uh, you know, once again, they, 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 they took off for the weekend. This is not the time to be taken off for the weekend. And, and then again, too, we got Jim Jordan is the leading guy. But he's going to have to probably make some concessions with Democrats. And I don't think Democrats are going to want to do anything with him. I don't think you can trust him. No. no different than Kevin McCarthy. The reason why, you know, I love it when people say, oh, uh, the Democrats voted with Matt Gates. No, they didn't. They voted against Kevin McCarthy because all the promises that Kevin McCarthy made, he broke. I can assure you that if the Republicans want to basically do a vote to out Gates, 100 percent of the Democrats will vote there, too. But here's the thing. I don't think you're going to get I don't think Jordan's going to get any Democratic help because, you know, I, I do remember Benghazi. I do remember all of the, the the things that he's done over the years that I just don't I don't see Democrats ever coming around to helping him. But again, this isn't the Democrats problem. The Democrats are not at fault here, no matter how many times Kevin McCarthy blames Democrats for the chaos that Republicans have created. This is not a Democratic Party problem. This is the leadership of the Republican Party who, is, who are in the majority right now. Uh, so what I ask, my question is, is, is this them telling us they don't want to be in the majority? They like minority status because they can be the children that they are in the minority status. Well, you know, being in the majority, your job is to pick a speaker, and they are proving to absolutely not be able to do that. And once again, like I said, the Democrats don't have no responsibility to come to the rescue of anybody in the Republican Party. And I don't know, you know, I mean, this is this is this is going to be ugly. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, they better figure this stuff out really quick, but because rich the, but uh, rich. we have a lot of. But rich for the good of the country. You know, Democrats should 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 concede. The Democrats should come around and they should they should they should be they should they should they should give in. No, no, no. <laughs> they should not give in to a Jim uh, uh, to Jim Jordan. There's no reason to give in to Jim Jordan for the good uh, of the country, Rich. Uh, look, it's not. But that's not the good of the country. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think that Jim Jordan deserves to be in that position. I mean, remember, if he becomes the Speaker of the House. He's like third in line for the presidency, he is you know, and here's a guy who absolutely, I guarantee you, participated in January 6th, knew everything about January 6th. You know, I mean, this guy literally helped Donald Trump. So he's the last person that we want to see with the gavel. And the Democrats have no responsibility whatsoever to elevate him to that position. They have every responsibility to fight like hell to make sure that we don't have somebody like Jim Jordan getting the gavel. 
Now, it was, it was said today by uh, McHenry, the, the interim speaker, that the basically Republicans aren't showing up. I, out of the 221, only 209 bothered to show up for work. Uh, there are 212 Democrats uh, who voted for Hakeem Jeffries. Um, you know, there seems to be a majority there. Yeah, no, no, you're absolutely right. You know, it's 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 really messed up that, you know, behind closed doors, the Republicans are scared because when Donald Trump said that Jim Jordan is the one, the Republicans don't want Jim Jordan. They know what he, he's a joke. I mean, here's a guy who literally had the gall to tell somebody that he was going to subpoena them when and, and Swalwell destroyed him, by the way. You know, I mean. It's a double standard that this guy, you know, lives by. And, I mean, at the end of the day, you have a lot of Republicans that are scared to actually come out and vote because they don't want to have to say, I don't, I want that person other than Kevin McCarthy. Yeah. Uh, not Kevin McCarthy, but other than Jim Jordan because Donald Trump is going to attack everybody who does not go with him. And that could potentially put people in harm's way with their reelection. Remember, the House of Representatives runs every two years. They're about ready to get back on the campaign trail. Here's how biased our media is, though. You know, how many stories have we seen about uh, Jim Jordan and and what went on at, at Ohio State now that he his name is thrown into the, the ring for a big job? I guarantee you, if this were a Democrat who had the kind of baggage that Jim Jordan has, uh, it would be the lead on, on every one of the, uh, you, you know, the F channel and all of the powerful cable news that conservatives control. Uh, right wing talk radio would be insane with it. It would be nothing but Jim Jordan, you know, child molester, Jim Jordan, you know, covered up for pedophile. It would be that wall to wall. And yet uh, I brought it up to a conservative today who had no idea, none whatsoever, what I was talking about. Well, you know, I will tell you, I believe that the Democrats hold their own accountable. I mean, uh, that's just how it goes. When a Democrat gets caught doing something, they've already asked Bob Menendez to, to step down. You know, I mean, the guy's, the guy's evidence is stacked up against him. And nobody you know, defended needs- him, Rich. There's nobody who's come out and defended him. I look at this thing with George Santos. How is George Santos still in Congress? Yeah, yeah, well, and, and that's the thing is, is that you know he's in Congress because they they want his vote and they know that he will vote the way he's told, you know now that he's gotten ten new charges added, you finally have some Republicans that got a backbone that say they want to make sure that they get rid of him. But we have to wait and see because once again, if do you think Kevin Mc, uh, do you think that uh, Jim Jordan is going to get rid of one of the 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 votes that he needs? I mean these people are going to look the other way. But if it was a Democrat. They would be on fire right now, and that's an absolute fact. If we had a Democrat that acted like Lauren Boebert, a Democrat that acted like Marjorie Train Rick Green, a Democrat that acted like Josh Hawley, a Democrat that acted like – and I could go on and on and on. They would be ran out of the caucus. Yep. But the Republicans absolutely will protect their own regardless if their own are the worst of the worst. I mean, and if we look at these people – I mean, Jim Jordan has got some serious baggage. The mere fact that they can elevate this guy is absolutely sickening. He doesn't deserve to be the speaker. He is a dangerous human being. Uh, you know, he's a liar. He's a he, he he's he's just garbage. And apparently, that's you know that's where we're at. And and what's really sad is that we have a lot of problems right now. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you right now. You know, we got people in in Washington D.C. that literally are cutting the funding to Ukraine. Understand that we're not wasting one single American life fighting Russia. Ukraine is carrying that load. And remember that Russia has always been our number one adversary. So right now, Ukraine is doing for us what we don't have to do. So the least we should do is continue funding and sending equipment. But we've got people like Marjorie Trainwreck Green and them that absolutely say, I want to cut that. They're literally supporting Vladimir Putin. And I'm going to tell you right now, make no mistake about it. What Vladimir Putin wants is he wants us to get bogged down in the Middle East. Because let me tell you something. If you think for one second that he's going to be done if he takes Ukraine, you're deeply misinformed. He's going to go for Moldova. Then he's going to go into Romania. He may go into Poland. And he's going to basically go back to the old the old uh, map. You know, he wants to control Yugoslavia. You know, he wants to control that part of the world again. He'll bring that back. 
and we can't let that happen. No, I said he wants to get the old, the old, the old band back together. Uh, and if you think otherwise, you're, as you said, misinformed. I think you're crazy if you if you think otherwise. You listen to the Rick Smith Show here with Rich Ojeda. Uh, Rich is the host of Ojeda Live, a nightly hit on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can check out the work that he does. Also, check out his website, turnleftpack.org, uh, where he is the, the head guy over there uh, getting Democrats and folks elected to Congress so that maybe we have a little bit of sanity and a little bit of uh, a little bit of hope of leadership. I mean, right now, you've got to be you've got to be just incensed at what you're seeing coming out of Congress uh, and, and, and with great hope of targets of some of these people to take out. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't believe that this is where we're at right now in this country. You know, we really need to, to see leadership. I'm, I'm, I'm appalled that they, that they took, they went home for the weekend. I'm appalled. I don't think that they should be allowed to, lay, to go home until they've got a speaker. And uh, I mean, I'm sure that over the weekend there's going to be a lot of things that's going to be going on. There'll be a lot of phone calls, a lot of conversations. But let's hope that on Monday when they get back, let's hope that, uh, you know, we're going to see something that makes sense. I don't think that Jim Jordan makes sense. I also don't think that Scalise made sense. I mean, we don't need a KKK member, you know, a guy who says, I'm like David Duke without the baggage. We don't need that. But we also don't need Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan has no integrity whatsoever. Jim Jordan will do exactly what Donald Trump tells him to do. These people do not care about our country. Because if they did, then they would take this more serious. Yeah. I mean, this is absolute sad. And I'm going to tell you, I, if we do not absolutely come back with a vengeance in 2024 and retake the House, and I'm talking about with a, with a severe lead, then something is wrong with this country. And, you know, I will tell you, I, I come from West Virginia. And, you know, I will tell you that when we had the teacher strike, you know, in 2018, we won that fight, and all the Democrats fought tooth and nail for the teachers. And I'm going to tell you it was a bloodbath. I don't understand how we could have fought so hard in West Virginia and then the very next election literally lose 80 percent of the Democrats in the state house. And that's exactly what happened. And I'm still like, we fought for you all, and you didn't reelect these people. What the hell's wrong with you? But, you know, I mean, that's nothing surprises me when it comes to politics. Well, I go back to what you know what we said a moment ago. You know, the reality is is the the right wing conservative media in this country is so powerful, has such a grip on on so many people that that reality doesn't seem to matter anymore. Uh, it's what's on the the F channel or you know any of the other you know hundreds of other outlets uh, that billionaires and and ideological right wing groups fund. Uh, look, they're masterful at it. Well, the problem is, is that they're, 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 they're watchers, the viewers. The viewers refuse to watch anything else. I mean, understand that, that the F channel just had to pay $787 million. And they're getting ready to get hit with another one from Systematic. And they say that they're not going to take anything less than $787 million. And, you know, you would think that, that this, the F channel would be trying their best right now to clean their act up but they're just going down the same thing. They're telling the same lies. And it's so sad when you have a group of people in this country that we know refuse to listen to the facts because they only watch one channel. And, you know, it's like that channel continues to spew the same garbage and they get away with it. Why can't we bring back the fairness doctrine? And I'm hoping and praying that if we take back the House, we'll do something like that, man. I mean, there's you. no reason for... I've, I've heard that a thousand times. I've had a bunch of people say, well, we need the fairness doctrine. Um, how do you enforce that now in the age of the Internet? How do you enforce that now in the age of podcasts and social media? Uh, would this only be for broadcast you know, error? Because you know, it was, you know, look, it did, it did well during its era for television and radio because it was limited, uh, you know, basic access you could limit. Now with so many inputs, how would you enforce that? Well, my thing is this is the news media to me they th there should be requirements when it comes to integrity you know i know look I, I you know i don't know i don't know what do we do with 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 the internet everybody goes on there i mean you're talking to somebody who right now if i go to facebook and i type in richard ojeda i'll find 30 fake profiles using my pictures you know i i try i, I wish i could stop that but i can't but i will tell you that the least we should do is hold 
the news media accountable for their actions. You should not be allowed to tell lies. No. You should. I mean, and literally, you know, this is dangerous. And let me th- look at what happened on January 6th. Because of lies, it led a group of people to go to Washington, D.C. and storm the halls of Congress because of lies. And, 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 and people need to be held accountable for that. I still believe that I hope it's more than just Donald Trump that gets held accountable for January 6th. I want all of these people. I want the people that gave the tours. I want, I want Lauren Boebert, who was live tweeting the whereabouts of Nancy Pelosi. You know, early in the morning when they say today is 1776, they knew exactly what was going to happen. Those people need to be held accountable. And instead of being held accountable, they're, they're, they're sitting at the highest seats of the land. And we deserve better than that. And I'm telling you, if we keep going down this path, if we don't figure out ways to correct our government and get people on the right track, man, I'll be honest with you, we may be on the outskirts of our country. We may become a dictatorship sooner than we think. And and, and there'll be no way for us to get out of that. And I'll be honest with you, I don't want to be a part of that. No, I'm right there with you. Uh, what do you think? I, I, I'm going to let you go here in a second. But what do you think of uh, Nancy Mace uh, as Trump's running mate? I mean, goodness gracious, better than Marge the train wreck green, <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, look, look, at the end of the day, Donald Trump is just, he, he, I, to me, how can people steal? I mean, the guy is, is, is you know, you're going to sit here and you're going to talk about, you know, Joe Biden. Joe Biden is hitting home runs, over 13 million jobs. I mean, the PAC Act, the CHIPS Act, insulin being capped at $35, the infrastructure package. I mean, Joe Biden is having a historical first term. The Democrats' problem is is they're not out here telling the success stories. They're sitting quiet and letting nothing be done. Joe Biden is showing up once every five days and answering questions for three minutes, you know, when the truth is is he needs to be telling his own success story. If yeah. you can't be your biggest cheerleader, then you got a problem. No, no, but we right. need somebody to start cheering. And this is where, you know, this is where House Democrats should be going, hey, uh, hey, uh, you know, I know the Republicans are having a little problem right now, uh, but they've got a bigger margin than we had. And look at all those things that Rich Ojeda just said we did with a smaller margin than the Republicans yeah. had. Maybe you put yeah. us back in charge. Maybe we get stuff done. Well, you know, Democrats actually work. Democrats actually push legislation. You know, think about that. Kevin McCarthy did not. Jim Jordan have not pushed and passed a single bill. I mean, you got two years when you are in the power, and all you got to do is push legislation and represent your constituents, and they haven't been able to do that. They've done nothing but drag a private citizen, Hunter Biden, through the garden, and at the end of the day, look, Democrats are like, look, if you find evidence against Hunter Biden, we don't care. Put him in jail. We don't care. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a joke. It's a joke. And not only do we have to deal with Donald Trump, we got to deal with these kids. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, the Mir- Jared Kushner. I mean, there's so much <laughs> dirt. And I'm hoping that when this is all said and done, I do want to see. I do. I do believe that Jared Kushner lured Jamal Khashoggi into that embassy when he got cut up into pieces. And I'm going to tell you, I believe that's the reason why he got that two billion dollar account. And that's why they pay him $25 million a year to manage it. I'm telling you, there's dirt there. We, we hopefully will find out. But, Rich, I appreciate the time. As always, good stuff, my friend. Hope folks will check out the, uh, the, the nightly hits on Facebook and YouTube, host of Ojeda Live. Also, make sure you check out the turnleftpack.org. Uh, we'll get links out on social media. Rich, always great talking to you, buddy. All the time, brother. You let me know anytime, brother. I'm there. Thanks so much, Rich. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts. Email me, rick at the ricksmithshow.com. I'm going to take a quick break. Right back after this, stick around. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show. For working people, come to talk. The phone lines are open. Give Rick a call at 1 866 416 Rick. That's 1 866 416 7425. I'm Rick Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1985. That was the day that clerical and support staff at Columbia University went out on strike. More than 1,000 staff members were represented by the United Auto Workers District 65. 
The workers wanted improvements in their benefits and their wages. They were also concerned by pay discrimination for women and minorities. Two days before the proposed strike was set to begin, the workers held a rally. Trade union leaders spoke out in support of the clerical staff. In a show of solidarity among Ivy League schools, members of the clerical staff union from Yale University made the trip from New Haven, Connecticut to New York City to support the Columbia workers. The Yale union had won its first contract just the year before after a 10-week strike. The Yale delegation chanted, We love you, 65. Oh, yes, we do. We whipped the Ivy League, and you can too. The strike lasted for five days. Some of the students formed the support group Students for a Fair Contract and helped pass out leaflets on the picket line. The Teamsters refused to cross the picket lines, stopping deliveries to the campus. According to the Columbia Spectator newspaper, the final contract included significant gains for the members. They won a 6% increase with retroactivity and additional hikes for minority workers, lower deductibles on medical insurance, and non-discriminatory clause and new technology language. The union's victory at Columbia was part of a wave of strikes by clerical workers at some of the nation's top schools. Stanford University went on strike in 1974 and 1982. Cornell's staff held three strikes during the 1980s. The workers who run these elite, well-funded institutions were standing up for their rights as workers. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show, where working people come to talk. <laughs> Go to the phone lines. We've got Alice on line one. Alice, how how are you doing today? I am semi insane. All right, that's that's an improvement, right? Hey, when I get sane, that's when people need to watch out. <laughs> so what's on your I'm mind? Serious. I've got a couple of things on my mind, but first I want to start out with get your new COVID booster. I went and got mine today. No problem. Get your RSV, too. That vaccine is rolled out. The second thing I wanted to bring up was, you know, let's just face it. Religion has no place in anything other than church and in the person's, a singular person's life. We go back to Israel, and let's just face it, we had religion that started this whole problem. Because they said, oh, the Bible said that the Jews had their own land, and we need to put them back there. So don't get me wrong here. I have nothing against Israel or Jewish people. My stepdaughter is Jewish. But this is the basis of the whole thing. And then we roll back to now, and we have the lunatics going, oh, oh, the war in Israel. Jesus is coming. Let him fight it out. Armageddon's here. I mean, this is insane. Religion has no place in politics, none whatsoever, because it leads to stupid decisions. If you if you want religion, go, go to, to church. church. There and you go. I'm with you. That's 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 right. And the the last thing that I wanted to bring up was this. I listened to a vlog on YouTube, and it is from a Russian man. His name is Konstantin. He is an engineer. He left Russia a year ago. He has worked around the war- world, and he speaks English very well. I've listened to him for a couple of years. He said on his uh, blog last night, he's no longer, he, by the way, he's not been in Russia since last year. Um, but his family is still there, and he keeps an, an ear open and an eye open on things. And he said that he firmly believes that, and, and this is what he said. He said, I believe that... When Trump gave the information about Israel to Russia, that Vladimir has kept that under wraps, passed it on to Iran to give to Hamas. And he firmly believes that when you boil it all down, that uh, Vladimir Putin is sort of the catalyst. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. But you have a good... Appreciate it, Alice. Thanks so much. And ultimately, that you know, you know, Trump was the guy who gave the information. This is the problem with having someone who, who you know, remember that whole that old that old saying, "Loose lips sh- sink ships." There's your loose lips guy. 
Oh, there's a guy who, hey, you like me. Here, see what I have? What can I give you? What can I show you that I have? And I'm so powerful. Yeah, very, very, very scary times we're in. Uh, and, and look, you know, the world is, is in, in chaos right now. And we have no functional leadership here.